Online family tree applications are great, aren't they? But they're not perfect. And there are many advantages to having your own private copy of your family tree saved locally on your home computer. Desktop software applications can add a lot of value to your genealogy research because they bring many important advantages to augment the online apps we've all come to know and love. So today we're exploring the benefits of desktop applications for organizing, preserving, and sharing your family tree. Let me show you how. It's as easy as one, two, three. Hi, my name is Jonathan and welcome to Family Tree 123. In part one of this two-part series, we looked at online Family Tree applications. In today's video, we're shifting our focus to desktop software for your home computer. Part one, preservation. One of the most important things each family genealogist has to consider eventually is the question of preservation. How will you ensure the long-term survival of all your hard work? Well, let me share a personal story that really drove this home for me. My cousin Sandra was a professional genealogist. For years, she wrote a column called Missing Links that appeared in newspapers across Atlantic Canada. Now, sadly, Sandra passed away in 2006 after a heroic battle with cancer, leaving behind years of genealogical research. In 2019, I visited her daughter Shonda, and she showed me what I expected uh, to find at her home bookshelves and filing cabinets overflowing with genealogical materials and research. But what I did not expect was Sandra's computer. Even though it had been dormant for 13 years, we hooked it up and turned it on and everything worked. Just imagine the treasure trove of research that was on that hard drive. But our excitement soon turned to disappointment when we were unable to find the thousands of family records we had hoped to recover. The software was still there, but we could not locate the data. The reality is software companies come and go. Today, it seems unthinkable that any one of these large genealogy websites could go out of business, but it's possible. And if you keep all your research on one platform, that could spell disaster. I'm thankful that Sandra left us printed copies of our family tree, so all is not lost, but I urge you to think about having a long-term preservation strategy. Here's my recommendation. First, use desktop software on your home computer in addition to any online apps you may be using. The reason for this is because desktop apps give you more control over issues around copyright and privacy, for example, as I discussed in part one of the series. Desktop apps also give you more control over your data for long-term preservation. And secondly, make sure you back up that data regularly. You can make printed copies or you can save your family tree data in a special file format designed specifically for genealogy. I'll tell you all about that digital file format at the end of this video. Part two, presentation or outputs. Now, if you plan on printing your family tree, this is one of those areas where desktop software can really shine through high quality outputs. Take the family group sheet, for example. One of my friends and co-collaborators, Dave Mills, has shared with me a ton of information about our common ancestors. Whenever I have a question, he fires off a PDF document with a family member's profile. Just take a look at this family group sheet for Jesse Mills. It is clear well-organized, and beautifully formatted with references and notes. But how does this document compare to the same information produced by the online applications? Let's go over to the computer and find out. So now if we go over into Family Search, and we've brought up uh, Jesse Mills here in Family Search, 
And uh, so we can do the same thing. We can just scroll down here and look in this right column. And down near the bottom there, you'll see Print Options. So if we select Print Options, it gives us a number of different things. We can choose the details of the person, the pedigree, fan chart, and so on. Here's the family group, which is basically the same kind of record that we were looking at. And here we can see, let me just make that a little bit bigger. Here we can see a really nicely formatted family group record for Jesse and for his wife, Patty, and, uh, and then their children, Henry and Stephen. We scroll down, um, Sarah and Rebecca and so on. And this is really beautifully formatted. You know, good job to the uh, the technical team at Family Search. I'm very impressed with the quality of this document. If we want to do a family group sheet for Jesse Mills in Ancestry.com, uh, we go to our family tree, we look up Jesse's profile, and then um, rather than using the tool menu on the right, which does give you a print option. Instead, go over to the, the left, to the name of the tree that you're looking at. And from here, you can go down to Family Group Sheet. When you click on that, it's going to give you a preview of what the Family Group Sheet is going to look like. So um, Martha's parents, I don't have Jesse's parents added yet, uh, but then their children and uh, details and so on. It might, may not be everybody's cup of tea to uh, have a family group sheet look like this, but uh, it is possible to print it from Ancestry. But there are many other outputs as well. Let me show you another option. Again, from Dave Mills, he shared this one with me. Oh, by the way, he uses software called Reunion. Unfortunately for Windows users, it's only available on the Mac. But have a look at this web page, The Pioneers of St. Clair County. And you can see that it's beautifully formatted. If you go to the top here, you can see that you can uh, search through all the sources. So he has all of the sources listed. And also, uh, just look at this, the index of surnames. So these are all the different uh, surnames that are present in this web page. And I'm just going to look at uh, Mills, which is my interest in particular. And like, just look at all those names under that one surname. That is incredible. And if I click on one of them, like say Hallie here, there's a photograph, there's her information. It's, it's just a remarkable achievement to be able to produce that high of a quality of a web page. And uh, this is, was done by the Reunion software. He has the family tree in the software. He said, I want to build a web page. Uh, Reunion put all the pieces together, and he just had to upload it to a web host, and you have this beautiful result. So there are lots of amazing outputs possible when you use desktop software. These are just two examples of many excellent output options available using desktop software. So when it comes to preservation and presentation, installed desktop applications have many advantages. Again, my recommendation is that you use at least one online application and one installed desktop application for maintaining your family tree. But which application is right for you? Well, let me tell you about a few popular options to get you started. Now, I want to be clear. There are many software options available, and this is just a partial list. And in the final analysis, you need to do your own due diligence to ensure you're choosing software that will do what you need it to do. But fortunately, most companies offer free trial periods so you can try before you buy. And just to be clear, I have no affiliation with any of these companies, and I receive no personal benefit whatsoever. These are my own opinions. First up is Family Tree Maker. This is a well-established program with a user-friendly interface. It's available for both Windows and Mac users. 
One of its standard features is its integration with Ancestry.com, allowing you to synchronize your data with your online records. There's a one-time fee of $79.99 or the gift collection for $69.99. Roots Magic is another versatile option that works on Windows and Mac. It offers a free version called Roots Magic Essentials, which is great for just getting started. The full version provides more advanced features and enables synchronization with multiple online genealogy apps. It is available for a one-time fee of $39.95. Legacy Family Tree is a Windows-only program known for its comprehensive reporting capabilities. It offers a free standard edition, which is perfect for those just getting started out. It also allows you to synchronize with Family Search. Now, I looked at the website and it doesn't really tell you what the purchase price is, just a button to download it for free. But I'm sure it's in the same ballpark uh, price as all the others. Gramps is the only genealogy software on this list that is available for three operating systems, Windows, Mac, and Linux. And since it's open source software, it is free to download and free to use, no restrictions. Personally, I find the interface to be a little bit clunky, but it's improving all the time. So if you're on a budget, you should definitely give Gramps a try. And finally, Reunion. This is the robust genealogy software I mentioned earlier that Dave Mills uses. It's only available for Mac, but it is user-friendly, it has powerful features, and it has extensive multimedia capabilities and first-rate outputs, as you've seen. It also synchronizes with Family Search and it's available for a one-time purchase price of 99 US dollars. This list is far from complete, but it gives you a place to start looking for software. I will put a link to a more complete list in the video description. Choosing the right software matters. It's not just about organizing information, it's about preserving your family's legacy. Now, earlier I mentioned a file format that provides a way for you to back up your data from any family tree program. It's a file format that you can use to back up your work and to share it with other family members. It's the GEDCOM file format. GEDCOM is an acronym for Genealogical Data Communications. It was originally designed by the Mormon Church and it is a standard file format that's widely used today. I'll cover more about GEDCOM files in more detail in a future video. So let me quickly show you how to create and use a GEDCOM file. In my instance, I've got the Mills family tree, and uh, I just happen to be looking at Jesse, but this is going to work for the, the whole tree that you're looking at. And uh, basically what you're going to do is go to settings, and once you go to settings, go down here to manage your tree. Here's a link to export. Are you sure you want to export it? Yes. And here it is generating the GEDCOM file. Well, that didn't take long. And now you can just click that button and download it. I recommend downloading a GEDCOM copy of your family tree at least once a month to keep a safe backup. So that's a wrap on desktop family tree software on your home computer. You can expect further tutorials on many of these software applications on this channel in the future. So let me know in the comments which programs you're most interested in learning about, as well as any specific issues or challenges you're trying to solve. Also, if you haven't done so already, make sure you watch part one in this two-part series, which is an overview of online applications. There's a link at the end of the video. And one final word of encouragement for you today. Even though your children may not appreciate all the work that you're doing, to put together your family tree today, I guarantee a few generations from now, everyone will call you great. <laughs> See you next time on Family Tree 123. Toujours une femme incroyable à mes yeux. Love you always, Sandra.